All right, the Lord is good. All the time. I said the Lord is good. All the time. All right, let's just quickly take our declaration of understanding, then we'll take our seats for a moment while we share the word of God on prayer, and then we'll continue to pray. Are you ready for that? Yes, All right, I want to let's go now. I declare. The Lord has given me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. And I'm being filled with the knowledge of his will. In all spiritual wisdom and understanding. As a result of this, I'm walking in a manner worthy of the Lord. I am pleasing him in all respects. I'm bearing fruit in every good work. And I'm increasing in the knowledge of God. Now again I incline my ears to his word. The word is entering my heart. It is giving me light and direction. He's healing me in every area, and it's making me more and more like the Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ. All right, the Lord is good. So let's take our seats quickly. Let's go. All right, Ezekiel chapter 36 is what I want to read in continuing what I've been learning concerning prayer. And I hope many of you were at the TCC All Believers Prayer convention that I held this past weekend, and if you were not there at all, so sorry for you. I really recommend that you get the messages preached um, during that. Um, um, I, I preached all the sessions, there were about six sessions in all, if not, uh, Raju, how many sessions were there? About six, right? Yeah. So I recommend that you get the messages, the Lord is good. I'll just read from verse 33 of the book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, uh, just to get a break from where I will start. Where I'm going is the end of the chapter, and what we need to look at is actually the whole chapter and many chapters before this, okay? But I'm just going to start from um, verse 33. It says, Thus says the Lord God, On the day that I will cleanse you from all your iniquities, I will cause the cities to be inhabited. And the waste places will be rebuilt. The desolate land will be cultivated instead of being a desolation in the sight of everyone who passes by. That is, the place currently is a desolation in the sight of everyone passing by. But I will make the land a cultivated land. In verse 35 it says, They will say this desolate land has become like the Garden of Eden. And the waste, desolate, and ruined cities are fortified and inhabited. And the nations that are left round about will know that I, the Lord, have rebuilt the ruined places and planted that which was desolate. I, the Lord, have spoken and will do it. Now verse 37. Thus says the Lord God, This also I will let the house of Israel Ask me to do for them. I will increase their men like the flock for sacrifices, like the flock at Jerusalem during her appointed feasts. So will the waste cities be filled with flocks of men. Then they will know that I am the Lord. Please, I want you to notice something here. God says, I will prove to them that I am the Lord. How will I do that? I will answer their prayers. That's the summary. Now, don't omit something. He wasn't saying, I will do this, and then they will know I'm the Lord. He said, I will let them ask me to do it for them. Please, I hope we are following that. I will let them ask me to do it for them. Then I will do those things, and then they will know that I am the Lord. Now, please, just bear this in mind also. When I use the word, this also, it lets you know that all the things he has been saying were things that he expected that the people would ask him to do for them. Please notice that. These are the things, as an example. He will say, in verse 23, I will vindicate the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned amongst the nations, which which you have profaned in their midst. Then the nations will know that I am the Lord. When I prove myself holy among you in their midst, I will take you from the nations, gather you from all the lands, and bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and will clean you. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. 
Then I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you and all of that. Then we go to verse 30 and verse 29. Moreover, I will save you from all your uncleanness and I will call for the grain and multiply it. And I will not bring a famine on you. I will multiply the fruit of the tree and the produce of the field so that you will not receive again the disgrace of famine among the nations. Now, this is just in chapter 36. If you go to previous chapters, you also see such promises here and there. All right? You just keep on going backwards. You will see. Now, God now ended it in that chapter 36. Okay? He said, this also I will let the... Which verse now? Verse 37. The house of Israel asked me to do for them. I will increase their men like a flock. Now, please bear this in mind. We've been talking about guarding your land. Remember that. We've been talking about it. And there was something I said, um, I think I should repeat it here. Because of mercy for those who did not follow us for the prayer convention this weekend. All right? Now, one of the things I said then, okay, is that there are four principles that actually guard the life or guide the life of Christians. Four principles by which we succeed in life. Please, let me just repeat them for us here. Number one, I said it is learning. Number two is what? Obeying. Number three is asking. And number four is receiving. Now, if you understand these four points, listen, people of God, you have life already made. Now, what is the point? You are not supposed to struggle in life pursuing things. Anything you want to receive in life, you are supposed to ask God for them. I discussed it last Tuesday. That's last meeting here. Okay, we discussed it. I was talking about the principle of asking. That's what we talked about last time. So it's just perfect to just add this to it, okay? That that is how life is supposed to be lived as a Christian. Anything you want is supposed to be an answer to prayer. That's how you will get it. Don't ever forget it as a Christian. Four active things you do in life. Number one, keep learning. Keep learning. You learn different ways. I mean, different dimensions. That's a better word. There are different dimensions in which your learning must be active. First of all, and most importantly, you learn the spiritual truths of life. You learn what you are in Christ Jesus. You learn about the Father. You learn about the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. You learn all those things. You learn the promises of God. You must learn them. Learning is a vital key to existence. If you are not learning, you are dying. If you are not improving in knowledge every day, you are diminishing. You are decaying. You are turning to yourself, you know. There's a very narrow gap. It's very funny, but right? But there are apes that are very close to human beings in their genetic material. 97% congruence of, I think, chimpanzees and human beings. If The only thing that makes you different from animals, Job told us, no, it was Eli that was speaking. He said, it's wisdom that we have. It makes us wiser than the beasts of the field and the birds of the air. It is that wisdom that God gives you that makes you actually superior to animals. It's not because you think that you are homo sapiens. It is that you know something they don't know. You have a relationship with God that they don't have. That is what makes you different in this life. I hope you're getting my point. So you are becoming more like God, which is the aim of being a human being, the aim of humanity. Why God created us is to become like him. You are becoming more like him the more you learn. You are becoming more like him the more you know, the more you understand, the more of his wisdom that is poured into you. So just see, knowledge in itself is just an end to everything. And okay, now that you know now, what is it going to help you with? It doesn't matter that you know you have become. Do you follow my point? You are being transformed by what you are imbibing. It's not everything that translates to money. <laughs> just by become, that is like, just, it's like food. You've eaten it, you have grown. It's not like, okay, with all this height you have attained now, uh, what have you become? Have you, have you become a basketballer? No, a child is good, supposed to grow. You come and be asking him now, say, okay, what is the aim of this, your height? Last year, maybe a few years ago, you were three feet. Now we can see now you're six feet tall. So now go and join them in an American NBA and be playing basketball. That's not it. He has eaten. He has assimilated the nutrients and it has translated to body size. That is what spiritual knowledge is like also. That this is eternal life. What is it? That they will know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. That is just the knowledge of God of the Father and the knowledge of the Son is eternal life. That is eternal life imparted. Don't forget that. That's point number one. Number two, whatever you have learned, 
Because one of the things we will learn, okay, let me add that one to is the precepts of God. The principles by which we are supposed to walk as, a, as um, children of God on this earth. This part, that's actually wisdom. When knowledge becomes practical for your everyday existence, we call it wisdom. When knowledge becomes practical for your everyday existence, we call it what? Wisdom. So whatever wisdom God has imparted to you, you must walk by it. That's my point number two. Obeying. Every instruction you have been given, you are obeying them. Everything that God has said to you, you are turning them to a habit. Now that's what the primary thing about the life of a Christian is. Those two things. Then whatever you want to achieve in life, what do you do? You ask. You don't struggle. You ask. You don't struggle. You ask. While you are learning, while you are obeying, you will become if you ask. While you are learning, while you are obeying, you will attain if you ask. While you are learning, while you are obeying, you will achieve, you will receive that which you have asked. That is how you become. It is not by struggling to become anything. It is by asking. It is by asking. Literally, God will make a way. He will lead you in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Don't forget it. The key to it is what? Asking. That you ask. What did James say? You have not because you are not connected. No answer me. You have not because you don't have money. You have not because you don't know people. You have not because you are not born in the right country. You have not because you are not educated. Why don't you have? Answer me. What did James say? You don't have because what? You do not ask. Let's just leave it there for now. There's more things that he said after that, but that's what I want to bring out. He said you don't have because you don't ask. The way God has ordained your life and my life is that it's supposed to be a life built on what we receive from God. Do you get my point? It's so important we understand it. All right? Let me get back to, you know, we're talking about guarding our land. And when we're talking about guarding the land, which land are we talking about? We said, listen, anything God wants to do in your life, first he plants you somewhere. And one of the things Satan does when he wants to deny you of your inheritance is to entice you to leave the place. That's what he does. He entices people. He looked at Adam and looked at Eve. Hey, God, these people, they are going to become something that's not good for me. So what do I do? Let me kick them out of their inheritance. How did he go about doing that? He tempted them so they could throw away their inheritance. Let me say this to us again. <laughs> when God put Adam and Eve in the garden, what did he say to them? He said, guard it and what? And keep it. Why were they supposed to guard it and keep it? It's a place of appointment. Any place of appointment that God gives you, Satan will try to drive you away from it. I said something the other time, okay? <laughs> Many, look, once you've left the place of appointment, it's very difficult to hear what God is saying. All that voice becomes so loud. People keep on saying they heard God, they heard God. Many times they didn't hear anything. The frequency is not clear anymore. It's so important we get this. God wanted to speak to Elijah. He sent him to a particular mountain, Horeb. Why did he not speak to him where he was? After all, he spoke to him to come over somewhere so they could talk. Why didn't they just speak to him there? It was vital to the Lord that Elijah came to Horeb so they could have that conversation. I hope you're getting my point. It is very important. So whatever God has kept in your hand, there's a reason for it. There is a reason for it. God planted a garden eastward in Eden, but he now put man there and told him, guard it and keep it. And I'm talking about some of the crucial methods by which we do that. He said, make requests. Make requests. I send into an, a, a, a land as an exile. What do you do? You entreat the Lord for his sake. People talk about pray for Jerusalem. We talked about that. Was it last week? Yeah, I think so. Or oh, two weeks ago. Okay, I don't know. We talked about it recently, sure. Okay. <laughs> pray for Jerusalem. Pray for Jerusalem. He said, why? He said, for the sake of my brethren. For the sake of the house of God. People turn around and say, they are fighting in Gaza. They are fighting in Jerusalem. <laughs> One man said something, what, at least to me it was laughable. President Trump, United States President, the last one, and possibly the next one, you know. The current one is um, Joe Biden. Trump was before him. So President Trump, some time ago, when he was president last time, one day he decided to recognize Jerusalem as a the capital of Israel. Now, that thing has been in contention for a very long time. And many American presidents have used that, used that as campaign promise to entice the Jewish Americans to vote for them. And none of them ever fulfilled the promise. 
Trump is a very different human being. If he's, anything he promised, if it's within his power, immediately he will do it. So this one, he decided to do it. So he got a one. They said it will cause problem in the Middle East. I don't think he did, but that was a threat. He got up one day and said, look, henceforth, the United States will recognize, which means the embassy will now move to Jerusalem, the U.S. embassy, as the capital of Israel. Of course, Palestinians are claiming part of it. It's Jerusalem. This issue. No, that's not my problem. The problem is that one man now said, <laughs> I was watching him on TV. He said, Lord, we are ready for your blessing now that we have recognized Jerusalem as capital of Israel. That God will now bless America. And I'm wondering, why? Why? I hope you also recognize Abuja as the capital of Nigeria so that God can bless you. You want to hear the truth? There's no special blessing attached to it. I've not found that in scripture. It's just conjecture. Because what the Bible calls Jerusalem, it said, for the sake of the house of God, that's where I'm going. For the sake of my brethren, I will say, peace be upon you. That is, what God is looking at, people don't understand it, it's Christ Jesus. It's the body of Christ. Right now, he does not dwell in houses made of no brick and mortar, iron rod and steel and cement. He doesn't. So wherever the people of God gather, that is the Jerusalem of God. Now, better note that what I have said is the truth of God. The Jerusalem from above is the church of God. Wherever they gather is the Jerusalem of God. So when he talks about Jerusalem, people sometimes will tell you that you are preaching replacement theology. No. See, there's no promise of God that is active except it's in Christ Jesus. I hope you're getting my point. You cannot reject Christ and be bragging that you are the people of God. I hope you get what I'm saying. See, that truth must sink into every believer. The promises of God, they are fulfilled only in one place. Which is where? In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. So when we are praying, get where I'm going to. Anywhere God places his people, you should pray for their peace. Do you follow my point? And that is when you, in quotes, tap into God's blessings. Anywhere, see, if for the sake, now maybe you hear of crisis in, well, let me not mention any particular state now, but you hear once in a while in this our nation, both in the north and in the south, but more often than not in the northern part of Nigeria and maybe the middle belt. And you remember, I remember once um, our brother Pastor came with, he told me about one, a friend of his that relocated to one of these middle, the north central states. He went there to serve NYSC. And he felt the call of God to stay behind. This young man actually stayed behind, not in the big city. One of the t- smaller towns there. That is where he's established. After some time, he even married somebody he met there. I think somebody who's from that area. And he settled. And anytime we hear, and it's one of those areas where you hear of, you know, fights, crises, and stuff like that. When you have so- stuff like that, and you know such a person is there. I never met him personally. But when we hear of crisis, we pray because of him. We pray because of the work of God he's doing. That's what David was saying when he's talking about for the sake of the house of God and for the sake of my brethren. If you think, no, the way people are so emphatic on, you know, God just decided one place and this is here, he, and then I must pray. Listen, Jesus himself said it to the same place people are saying I must be praying for. He said, until you say blessed is he, is he that comes in the name of the Lord. He said, that place will be desolate. So if I want redemption for anywhere, I pray that the light of Christ will shine upon them until they say, what? Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Because if they don't, the decree of the Almighty has been sealed over the place that it will remain desolate. I hope you're getting my point. Let me tell you something. You can never pray against what God has spoken. There's a technique to these things. If you want peace there, you need to pray that the people therein, and if you must pray, all right, or I want to pray for Jerusalem. Your focus, I go. If people, if I say this, some people say that you are anti Semitic. I'm not anti anybody. I'm just pro Jesus, Jesus sick. You get my coin there? I'm just pro Christ. I'm pro Christus. That's all. Because you see, if you don't understand Christ, you mislead people. A man was preaching once. 
Say somebody asked him, are you a Jew? He said, oh, I wish I were, but I'm not. I said, what is it to wish? You're a Christian, you're a preacher. You're a preacher of Christ. You're anointed. Jesus has placed, had placed his hands upon you and breathed into you and said, receive the Holy Spirit, giving you new life. And you're wishing you were a Jew. Why? Like one brother, I won't mention his name. Where is he? Okay, I've seen him somewhere. He said he wanted to marry a Jew so he can collect both blessings. <laughs> Let's talk in monetary terms. It's like <laughs> Bill Gates' son saying he wants to marry who's the richest man in Enugu? Okay, he wants to marry um, Jonathan's daughter so that he can... I know Jonathan is rich. Yeah, I know. I'm not saying he's not rich. But I just wanted that. Okay, how much money do you want to gain? Do you follow where I'm going? How much money do you want to gain? I'm not saying he's not rich. But it's a kind of wealth you have. You, you don't look to another place to go and be hey, how can you be in Christ? Robert, calm down. Don't worry, I won't mention your name. The guy who was guilty, he has repented anyway. He's looking at me and laughing. There are many of them laughing. You won't know which one of them. That he wanted to marry a Jew so he could tap both blessings. The one in Christ and the one in Jacob. And Jesus is looking like, what? Did somebody just insult me down there? The blessing of Jacob is the one that is in Christ. If he doesn't go into Christ, there's no blessing. Do you get what I'm going to say? There's none. There's none. Please let me say it again. Why am I going this direction? There are people I listen to, good teachers. They say God has two covenant people on the earth. I say it's not true. Just one. Because there's no covenant you have that's effective, except it's in Christ Jesus. It's only in Christ Jesus that the covenants are effective. The blessing is only effective in Christ Jesus. Let me say to you again. If you are a tourist, it's good. Some people like to see the world. Me, I'm not interested in seeing many places. I don't know. Now, that is not spirituality. That is just me. Are you getting my point? Just like somebody is white and black. Some people have black beards. I have white ones. Do you get my point? None of this is spiritual. Just what you are, are you getting my point? So that's the way it is with me. I'm not interested in seeing many places. Some people say they, they want to climb the highest mountains in the world. I, and I'm like, why? What is wrong with staying on the flat plane? Okay, the God of the mountains, maybe. Now, what I'm, so people are different. If you're a tourist and you like to sightsee, please go to Jerusalem. Don't go now, there's fight. Oh. Right now, the war there is, pl- is too plenty. You don't know when Iran will start retaliating against the retaliation that Israel retaliated against the, no, the, the, what do you call those things? The missiles that Iran sent some time ago. You know, Iran sent some missiles. Israel said they will retaliate and they retaliated about two days ago. And Iran said they will retaliate on the retaliation. And when you retaliate to the retaliation, there shall be retaliation against the retaliation. Anyway, they call it response to response. In science, we call that a positive feedback or vicious cycle. That's how the war starts, you know? All right. So I'm not recommending you go there now. That's what I'm just trying to say. Try and stay around <laughs> where there are nobody shooting missiles, all right? Mm-hmm. All those missiles, they, they, mm-hmm. I think they've even banned flying in many, most of Israel, they can't even fly. Yeah. Okay? So when there's no war, go and sightsee. If you want to see the tomb of Jesus Christ, you are not likely to see it, but at least go to the one that they told you it is, so just go. Pretend. And say, this is the house where the last supper was eaten. Go. Just know that you're not sure, but this you two you have seen, you can come back home and bring back mustard seed for us and genuine olive oil from the Holy Land. Fine. God bless you. But brethren, there is nothing spiritual about your trip. It is just a tourist, you know, it's tourism. It's a tourist adventure. You are not more spiritual than those who went to Sahara Desert during that period to go and see the serpents in the sand. I'm not joking. After all, some people want to see how Israel left Egypt and crossed the wilderness. I hope you are following what I'm saying. I'm not saying it is bad. I'm just saying don't feel spiritual. And don't be silly. Don't put JP after your name. You get my point? Don't put JP after you. It's not necessary. Now, you now put Mama Gio is there. I could JP. 
Huh? Yes, <laughs> Madam Chisholm, JP. I'm just looking at Benga. Say, Olu Benga, it's not JP. <laughs> it's not necessary. Don't use the deceivers. JP means justice of the peace. Don't turn yourself to Jerusalem Premium. It's allergies that do things like that. You know, in Islam, a trip to Mecca is advocated and strongly recommended for anyone who can afford it, even if it's once in a lifetime. Is that okay? There is nothing like that in Christianity. So in Nigeria, the rest of the world, they may, they may not do But in Nigeria, when you go to Mecca, you do the Islamic pilgrimage. You come back and become Alhaji or Alhaja. I think it's only Nigerians that do it and some Africans. Africans love titles. Okay? Christians now decided to put their own too. You go to Jerusalem, you are now JP. Brethren, a bad thing is a bad thing. Stop it. What did I say? Because it doesn't mean anything to your spirituality. Me too, I can travel all the way to Udi and I come back and say, UP. I mean, UD, UDP. Udi program. I mean, you are just as spiritual as I am. You put JP, I put UP. The same thing. Some people don't believe what I'm saying. They are listening. I say, what do you mean? When you finish, you will come back. Pray. See, there is no prayer you said at home that God didn't hear. He will not say. Because, like my friend said, he went there once. He went as a government official. He said, when Christians got there, they were running on the ground where Jesus was buried. They were using the sand to rub their body. Yes. Yes. Some decide to be, um, to be baptized in the Jordan. Because that's why Jesus was baptized. Now, how does it make you feel at the end of the day? You've been baptized in the Jordan. So? The Ethiopian eunuch, was he baptized in the Jordan? How am I talking about this? Some of you have been saving money for a trip that's not necessary because you can't afford it. You want to go there. You're not a Muslim. Where did I say? You're not a Muslim. It's not compulsory. Look, that money donated to Muslim because for him, it is compulsory. For you, it is not. But you don't have to donate to anybody. You can bring it with it. With it. You should have a Thanksgiving service. Buy food for all of us. Trust me, God will bless you for it. I'm just some people are listening to me today. Maybe they have been discussing their house, thinking that, ah, God, oh, this year we are going to go to Jerusalem. Stop the war so we can come. God said, I won't stop it. If that's the reason why you want to come. The Lord is good. Can I get back to my message? The point I'm making is that why do we pray? It's for the sake of the house of God and because of the brethren, because of the people of God. That is the house of God, the body of Christ. Now, the point I'm making is this. Now, what God does, I'm just reviewing some things we have said before. What he does is that he places us somewhere and he says, guard it and do what? Keep it. I say it again, please. Pardon us, we are preaching from Nigeria. In case you are joining, from, joining us from other countries or you are not a national of Nigeria, even though you are in Nigeria. It applies to every country. All right, in Nigeria today, the church is established. And I can say by the Spirit of God, the reason is that God wanted to say what? To the church in Nigeria. You go and see it, read Revelation. He will tell you to the church in Ephesus, right? He defines the church by geographical locations. You go through your scriptures, the church is really defined by their geographical location. Philadelphia was a city. Smyrna was. Sardis was. Ephesus was. I hope you're getting my point. All those places, there are places, they were, that's how the church was, the church in the scriptures was not defined by denomination. It wasn't. But let's not talk about the issue of denominationalism now, all right? I'm not saying everybody should be under one denomination. Right? You can, that's not what they say, because sometimes we have different functions. The way they sing in one place may not be good for other people, so we just, for the sake of that convenience, we'll go different ways on Sundays. It's not a big deal. I don't think we'll make it a big deal. We don't have to unite and have one archbishop over us. It's not necessary. That's not what I'm going to say. But let's just recognize each other as brothers, as sisters, as part of the same body. Okay? What I'm going to say is that because God defines the church by geographical location, and when he placed a man in Eden, he said, guard it and keep it. I'm saying the church should understand that whatever geographical location they are in, that's God's Jerusalem for them. Did you hear what I said? Yeah, that's God's Jerusalem. That is your Jerusalem. That is your Jerusalem. The reason why 
you know, like I said earlier, when they say pray for Jerusalem, it says because of the house of God. It's because of my brethren. Let's just read that portion again. Psalm number 122. Please open to Psalm number 122. From verse 6, say, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And there's a quote that follows that, may they prosper who love you. May peace be within your walls and prosperity within your palaces. Please notice verse 8. That's what I've been quoting again and again. For the sake of my brothers and my friends, I will now say, may peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. I hope you're getting my point. Remember what I was saying? What makes Jerusalem important here? Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. He says, for the sake of my brothers and my friends. I'm talking about the people of God. Take it as the words of Jesus Christ there. He said, for their sake, I will say, may peace be within you. The word peace is the same word for prosperity in Hebrew. Not only will you have peace from wars, from famine, from troubles, from pestilences, you will also have what? Prosperity. May prosperity be within you. So for the sake of the house of our God, I will seek your good. Whenever God places a church, now listen to this. I was saying by geography, God defines us geographically. Whenever God places a church, I'm reviewing, we've said these things over the last um, few meetings, just trying to put things together. Whenever God places a church, is his own Jerusalem. So when Jesus gives an instruction, tarry in Jerusalem until you are indeed from power from on high. There's a place where you are supposed to be. He said, you'll be my witnesses, first in Jerusalem, then Judea, then Samaria, and then the uttermost part of the world. You start from where you have been kept as a church. He wasn't talking about literal Jerusalem for everybody. The church at that time was in their own Jerusalem, which happened to be the literal Jerusalem. I hope you're getting my point. The church in Enugu, let's take Enugu, all right? The metropolis. The church in Enugu, this is your Jerusalem. Anytime you hear of trouble, you hear of um, kidnapping, you hear of riots, you hear of um, uh, um, uh, maybe an epidemic breaking out, don't forget, your prayer starts from your Jerusalem. God says, if they cannot put an end to the troubles disturbing this region, that is our Enugu metropolis, and let's say the whole state, it's because of failure on our part. It's because I've seen people take charge of their cities and their states and God granted peace because of them. I told you that then in PFM, when all these problems started in Sokoto, my friend was PFM president at that time. Bombing here, bombing there. People came to him and said, what do we do? Churches were being bombed in Abuja, in Kaduna. Those kind of things were going all over this country. People were in here to ask Elta. They came to him and said, look, let us, what do we do? He said, what do you want to do? They said, let's go and get, you know, bomb. all these things, they'll be scanning you. He looked at them and said, all right. So when you finish detecting the bomb, what's the next thing? Church people want to detect bomb. While they were having discussion, a bomb exploded in police headquarters. He said, look, the people you wanted to protect you, look at what is going on. So they said, so what do you want us to do? He said, you will gather to pray. Is that not why you are Christians? Is that not why you are ministers? He was, I mean, he was talking to ministers. That was when everybody put their differences aside. Once I was there, I was preaching. It was, a, it was one, one of the days of the week. And I looked out. In fact, my heart first shifted this morning. I saw a mass of men heading towards where we were preaching. <laughs> Thank God I didn't run down from the pulpit. I just had to calm down for the sake of the brethren. <laughs> everybody walked in. I found that they were all ministers of the gospel. We were coming from a prayer meeting. So when they finished praying, one of them said, Ah, you know, our brother is doing his program this week. Let's all go there. So they all arrived at the same time and walked into the church premises at the same time and walked into the hall. So all of them just walked into the hall and lined up. All of them ministers of the gospel. All denominations. The ones that believe in speaking in tongues and the ones that don't believe, they all, keep, they all they gather together, they pray. Those of you who want to pray, speak in tongues, say it on this side. Those who don't want to, just on this side. That is, <laughs> they all prayed. And you know what? 
time will not allow me now. And again, you know, like a lot of things, because we are streaming, I don't want to put everything on record and live on YouTube and all the streaming channels, okay? But I've been giving you some very, very serious gist because God began to answer them. Oh my God, they saw, they saw terrible things in righteousness. Those terrorists went there too. They come there, they tried to build a base, they could not. They tried to build a base that they could not. God kept on exposing them and they constantly were being dislodged. And the military commander in that area testified one day to one of them and said that how we detect these people is mysterious. The man that was telling me then, he was the PFM president at that time. I, 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 this time around, I came to come and minister in one of their programs. That's PFN program. So he came to pick me from the airport. So then the two IC of, in charge of the military cantonment, there was at it. So they were talking when I arrived. So he introduced me to the man in the corner. I left now corner or so. There's nothing in the things that they were saying. Because he took charge and said, this is our land. This is our Jerusalem. Anywhere God keeps is your Jerusalem. That's what I'm making. What makes it Jerusalem? You know, America, they have a habit. I don't know whether we have it in Nigeria like that. You know, they have a plane called Air Force One. We used to think Air Force One was a particular plane. They said, no, it's wherever the president is. Once it's flying, it's Air Force One. They have one, of course, that carries him specially. But, and it's, by law, is a military aircraft. You may, you may look, you may think it's just a normal jet, but it belongs to the Air Force. It's called Air Force One. If he comes down from there and enters another one, that one is now called Air Force One. Whatever the president is, is Air Force One. If it's a helicopter, they call it Marine One. Belonging to the Marines. Call it Marine One. If it comes down from one, goes to the other one, that's now Marine One. You will never find the president in Marine Two. No, that's the vice president that rises in Marine Two. Do you get my point? It's his presence. Like they say, concerning the court also. The court is not the building. It's the presence of the judge. They said the court is now sitting. They just mean the judge is now sitting. They mean the judge is now sitting. And the judge has the right. He can decide that, look, this place is too hot. Everybody, come and sit with me under the mango tree. And the court is sitting. Do you get my point? Let's get that clear. That is what Jerusalem is for us too. Jerusalem is not the geographical location, but the presence of the people of God. Jerusalem is the presence of the house of God. We as living stones, can you say lively stones, are being built up as that house. Wherever we are is Jerusalem. Don't forget that principle. People don't understand Christianity. Christianity is different from Judaism. The rules of interpretation, they are very different. Everything in Christianity is Christ-centered. There's no prophecy you can interpret if you don't have the testimony of Jesus. It's the reason why I seem to disagree. People say, well, you don't believe any of this. I say, how can I believe? Where is the testimony of Jesus inside it? Where is the testimony of Jesus? You can't run out to a physical, geographical Jerusalem. And I'll be impressed. Because I'm looking for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Please mark this interpretation I'm giving you today down. Where is Jerusalem? This is where the house of God is built. I've seen preachers, and I wonder, I say, what kind of thing is this one? They are gathering money to build a temple for Jesus Christ in this Jerusalem. They actually are hoping to have money to buy land and build a physical temple. I say, which Bible do you people read? Why do you want to put the new wine, the new wine, still in an old wine skin? This is Christianity. We are dealing with new wine here. We are dealing with new wine. We are not dealing with old wine. So we must have the new wine skin. Then we must have the... See, please, that's what I'm trying to explain. Every interpretation must be centered around the person of Jesus Christ. Otherwise, it is not Christianity. Why do you want to glorify where Jesus is not glorified? Why do you want to magnify people that have not magnified Jesus? Who till today? I'm calling him names I don't want to repeat. Why preach it? Come on, take it easy. Anywhere God keeps his people, that's their Jerusalem. There's a church in this Jerusalem. If you look at it as any good where we are, that's our Jerusalem. So God holds us responsible. And he says in that Psalm 122, he said, listen, you know, guard it and do what? Keep it. How do you guard? Remember I said that in Christianity, we get results through what? Asking. Asking. 
asking. That's our key. That's our key. Was it yesterday? Yes. I got a new flash. The, a, the dean of one particular you know, institute in, in the UNN was kidnapped. All right? On my road. When I say my road now. Between Enugu and Nusuga is my road. For many reasons. So it has become my problem. Someone will turn around and say, what's the, what's, the, what's, the, what's the police doing? What are the security people doing? And God is saying, what are you doing? What are you asking me for? So instantly, we start praying. I began immediately to make my request on, the, on behalf of the individual and on behalf of every user of that road and on behalf of that road. Why? This is my geographical location. He kept me there. The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he kept the man whom he had made. And he said to the man, guard it and keep it. I told you there, where we live. We've lived there for a few years now. Nice area. Beautiful. It's been getting better by the day. One day my wife took it upon herself that the road to this place must be good. When she began, honestly, my faith was not that strong. I just had to say amen. Thank God I didn't talk nonsense. I don't think it took more than two years. When she took that prayer seriously, before I knew what was happening, boom. In fact, the only bad side of it is that when I heard the price, between last year and this year, it went up by about 60% of property in the area, plus of land. Why? Because the current government just came, boom, fixed the place, put fine road infrastructure there. I mean, I tell, I, look, let me tell you the truth. I don't look, I don't look at these things lightly. When I say that is a result of prayer, I mean I'm not trying to sound like a preacher. Those is when I came to Enugu. See, I've been in Enugu now for longer than some people here have, of course. None of my children have been born when we moved to this town. The Bible says that, <laughs> look to Abraham, your father, and Sarah, your mother. I called him alone. That's how I was. My wife and I came alone to this city. That was about 20-something years ago, 24 years ago. So my children were born while we were in this city. I can assure you of one thing. This city was not this fine that time. Some of you can't even remember what our quarter looked like. Some of you can't, even this new, uh, this new market, going from that NTA side, uh, is it region Nigeria side, to, yeah, you can't, some of you can't, re, you can't remember what it's like. It was passing through the valley of the shadow of something. <laughs> Try not to fear evil. Then you come on the other side. Now people don't, people can't even look. They don't recognize that now. I mean, I don't take it lightly. I want to say something that will make someone say, yeah, yeah, yeah. better stop, don't do it, before your face hook on that side. <laughs> you know why the city experienced that? Because I came here, and we began to bless the city. Some people are turning their face, oh, be careful, oh, before your face hook on that side. <laughs> <laughs> I remember then when Charles Sududu became our CBN governor, and he made some dramatic, you know, declarations. And of course, banks began to open all over Enugu because... One of the rules I think they had that time was that for you to have a particular kind of license, you have to have branches in every capital city of Nigeria. So I told everybody, I said, listen, see, God is going to bless me heavily materially. So he has opened the bank so I can, they, they have come to save me. All things are yours. That's what the Bible says. They wanted to look at our airport and change it to international airport. I said, don't worry. A friend of mine lives in America. We're talking about it. I said, don't worry. Very soon, eh, it is straight from Enugu to Houston. That is, it's not international airport. See, these things, we will declare them into existence. Now, if I want to fly, first, first fly to Abuja, then go and say, <laughs> one day, my wife was going abroad. So we saw the ticket. I said, ah, better to fly from Abuja, it's better. She, if she had no, she had just gone to Lagos, JJ. She from here disappeared, went to Abuja, bought their plane, they went to Lagos and dropped her in Lagos again. She had to leave the air. She said, which kind of wall this one? I would have just gone flew, flew straight from here to Lagos to go and join the same plane. I said, it's not the will of God. This is Enugu. Are you getting my point? See, this is our, they call it international. So it is in Jesus' name. Amen. That's, that word has gone out to go and walk. I said, look, we guard and keep by making what? Requests of the Lord. We ask God. He said, this also, I will let the sons of Israel ask me to do for them. I will let the sons of Israel ask me to do for them. We don't get results in life by struggling. It's by asking. Let me go back again. First, you continue to learn. 
Whatever God has given you as his precepts, you obey them. Then after that, what do you do? Start asking. I don't talk about receiving now, because I just want to focus, because that will began last time. We make requests. Today I'm talking about our Jerusalem. When you talk about Jerusalem, people will gather and be praying for Jerusalem that's 6,000 kilometers away. Remember, they are standing in the center of Jerusalem. Their feet are in Jerusalem. What is Jerusalem? It is that place where God has kept his house. And we know what the house is. It is where the brethren live, where they congregate, where they gather. From where they launch, because Jerusalem is critical for something. It's a launching pad for the assignment of God in your life. Jerusalem is a launching pad for the assignment of God in your life. How do I know that? He said, you'll be my witnesses first in Jerusalem. You cannot be effective in Judea and Samaria and the rest of the world unless you are well built in Jerusalem. What did he say to them? Tarry in Jerusalem until you are with power from on high. What is Jerusalem? The launching pad for the work of God in your life. When God planted Adam in Eden, I mean, he made everything, but he chose for Adam a place where they would meet. So he planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he kept Adam. There he made all the provisions, and he said to Adam, guard it and keep it. Let me talk about the operations of Satan again. What does Satan do? Convince us to say everything negative. See, let me say something to you. eh? There's a principle in scripture. God said, that which I hear you say in my ears. That's what I will do to you. Even though what you are saying is wrong, say, but I will do it. And those who said what they said, they had good reasons for it. This wilderness is useless. Our children will die here. They will die. This is a land that gobbles up the, <laughs> the inhabitants. They were describing the promise that God said they should enter. They said, we are not able to enter. We are not able to enter. We are not able to enter. And they had good reasons. Giants in front of them. Problems in front of them. They're trying to start businesses, power failure in front of them, rising cost of fuel in front of them, rising cost of foreign exchange in front of them, banditry, rising cost of food in front of them. They had good reasons, so they said what? We are not able. And God said, just as you have said in my hearing, so I will do to you. So Satan knows that. See, let me, let me tell you, many people don't... <laughs> If you come around here often enough, you hear us lead prayer now. Nobody has time to fight witches and the devil. You know why? When we're young, they used to tell us, sing a song. If you know the song, eh? finish it for me. Jesus power. Super power. Jesus power. Super power. Jesus power. Super power. I don't think you know the song. Because the way you are whispering like this. Now, answer me properly. Jesus power. Super power. Now, you know the song. Jesus power. Super power. Now, listen to this. Mommy, water power. Power power. 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 That's how I was going. Say, thanks power. Power power. That's how we used to sing it. We call all the other ones what? Powerless power. That is like, so why do we not make powerless power the center of our prayers? That's what I make it. That song is inspired. It's of God. All other powers, we call them powerless powers. They were all powerless. Yeah, these days in Christianity, people will not start praying. Every power monitoring me. Die, die. You know why they insist on dying? That is the issue of you, they must die. Because they are afraid. If you're not afraid, would you care? You know if you see a walk gecko in your house? Now, you know, I don't believe in killing. I, I see human beings that kill war geckos. You are very wicked. I don't know why you should kill war geckos. If I say, in fact, there was a time I told my wife I have to go and buy war gecko. Yeah, I don't, we seem not to have in my house. I don't know. Where, where there's a way the ceiling is. They don't have where to hide. It's very difficult for them to talk themselves anywhere. So I need to get like, and you know, I like war geckos. Let me just teach you some more zoology. War geckos are very sensible animals. They're not like cockroaches that can be 200 in your house. 2,000. One gecko is one. You see here, another one there. No matter how big your house is, you don't go see more than three. They are very territorial. They don't eat in your kitchen. They only eat insects. They clean the They don't make noise. 
They have sense. They don't come and crawl on your body while you are sleeping. Why do you kill such things? They don't litter. They don't do it. Oh, God. I love war geckos. Listen. They keep the balance. You know, it's called ecosystem. Go and read your balance. They balance the ecosystem very well. Now, where I'm going with all of that is this. They're, no, they're pretty harmless. They're pretty harmless. It's just that some people, some people see witches in everything. Say, the witch was looking at me. Eh? <laughs> now, where I'm going with the whole talk about war gecko is this. Do you know, if you saw a war gecko in your house, and you're the type that kills war geckos, let me just ask you a question. And it disappears. Will you go and sleep? What I mean, like, maybe you wanted to chase it. It just enters a crevice. Will you sleep? No, I'm, there's no trick to it. Will you sleep? Will you start looking for it that night? Let me ask you another question. If you saw a snake and it hid somewhere, are you sleeping? That, sleep, that snake is coming out that night. You will gather the name. Even fire extinguisher will come to work. Where do you enter? Give me the fire. <laughs> you will go. Where, now, where, where I'm going is this. If you believe, and you're not wrong, the snake is dangerous, the war gecko is not. That's why you went to sleep. You saw the war gecko, you went and slept. Even though you're a war gecko killer, you know, we care so, but at least you can sleep the night and begin to suspect you that you kill war gecko. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I know you kill war gecko. There's no need. The way you were doing, mm, no, describe such a beautiful creature. I mean, so some people, some people kill war gecko. What kind of human being are you? But the point I'm making is this. Did you notice the war gecko doesn't keep you awake? What is the reason? You know it's harmless. So why are we always trying to die, die, die? They must die. Because we think if they are alive, we won't make progress. People get, wake, wake up in the morning, join online prayer. Make me laugh. Begin to pray, all the powers, this year they will die. I say, why? Because you feel, if they don't die, you will not make progress. Treat those witches like war geckos. They can't do anything. If I want to sleep, witch taps, don't like this. I, will, I say, if I slap you like this, you think, I say, my friend, get away, I'll go back to sleep. I won't, I will not get up because of you. I say, yeah, witch, just come and tap me. <laughs> The, the kind of eye I will give you. I will not dignify you with my time of prayer. That's what happened. I don't have that time. I mean, there are important things to, 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 to talk about. The plan of God for our lives. How far are we fulfilling it? How well do we know the Lord? How much are we improving our character every day? We have not prayed about that. People are still getting you angry anyway. Your blood pressure keeps rising because of traffic. You've not prayed about that one. And now you're praying about which is nonsense. Why did I get into that? I was trying to say something. I don't know. I don't pass that one since. Anyway, so how do you guard your city? That's what I'm trying to say. How do you guard your land? How do you take care of Jerusalem? Don't distract yourself with nonsense prayer points. That's the point I'm going to make. Okay, I, yeah, now I remember what I was saying. Satan, yes, Satan, yes, yeah, Satan. Yeah, I was talking about Satan. Yeah, I don't remember. That Satan doesn't have power. That's why I went into snake and war gecko. He doesn't have. He doesn't have. He doesn't have. So you know what he does? He has to trick you. He has to. You have to give up the land by yourself. Satan is a master of rumors and wrong perceptions. He's a master of rumors and wrong perceptions. He has to persuade you that you can't enter. He has to say to you, this place is not good. God is taking you somewhere, passing through the wilderness. He'll say, what is this? Manna. That name is not even a good name. Manna. You know what manna means? What's for breakfast? Gary again. That's the meaning of manna. Beans. Beans. We had beans yesterday. This night again, beans. Like one of my friends said, sang, beans, beans, beans. Beans will grow your head. That's what they call manna. You start disregarding the blessing of God. Say, I would never so great to sleep in Jesus' name. What's wrong with someone to sleep? Don't move. They think it's a prayer point. I'm telling you. God will not let me so great to sleep. 
God said, Gary, that I rain. Of all the foods I know, eh, there's none that look as much like mama as Gary. False, no, from heaven. We come, I'm talking about how Satan works. To the ones, <laughs> one of my relatives was eating. She said, look, she doesn't understand what's going on. That this plate is not what my maids used to eat. I got up. I was so angry. I, I looked at her like this. I didn't know what I, I can't remember what I answered or not. But I was so angry, I got up and walked away. But I said, Andy, it's not your fault. Though. I visited the place as a fine. So this is not the level where my mates are. They don't eat with plates like this. That's Satan. Satan wants to drive you away from your inheritance. He sits down and explains everything that is wrong to things around to you. And tells you, the grass is greener on the other side. What I'm talking about is how Satan displaces people from their own Jerusalem. He can, he doesn't have power. Like, remember what Gecko story I was telling you about? That's how he is. You don't worry about Satan. You shouldn't. And he knows he's that powerless. But you know, there are people who we, who we faint if they say what Gecko. It has never touched them. You know the way you react if cockroach crawl inside your cloth? And to Jews even fainting there. Just, I, I, I didn't do anything. I just said it. This director is fainting. Today she almost converts because I said cockroach enters. And I hope you know cockroach does not bite. It's just an annoying irritation. It's a mental thing. Just your brain. It doesn't do anything. It's just been designed to just annoy you. But if cockroach enter one place, eh, the way people will scatter cockroach. They, want, they, want, they have this, <laughs> a half-killed cockroach behaves like an evil spirit. Have you noticed let me explain. It's happened to me a lot. I'm in my room. I'm sleeping. Is that hearing? Then you close it. I try to sleep. The thing will go. After I mean, I like my sleep. You now come out. You now look under the bed. This little rascal that you hit with a. A shoe the other time. I'm coming, I don't like squashing it so that they don't stain my stuff. He ran away, landed on one piece of paper that is under your bed, and he's now trying to climb the wall using that paper. He hear, ksh, ksh, ksh. Do you know there are people who didn't check this? I pray. <laughs> Every power coming against me. <laughs> Die by fire. In the name of Jesus. Before you check on the call coach. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. 30 minutes. To cast that one half dead cockroach. That's what Satan does. See, that I'm telling you is not a joke. Now, until you don't faint. Okay, close your ear. I want to say something. It, look, if you won't close your ear, don't shriek when I talk. No Chinese people, some of them eat cockroaches. I've seen videos of people that farm cockroaches and they in bags. They would drive, export them in bags and they sell them in, you know what, you know 50 kg bags. What they use it for, I don't know. Something they used to do Chinese medicine. Some of you keep on in, ordering medicine on like, <laughs> you don't swallow something. <laughs> but the point I make is that, look at the way all of you are reacting. Those something some people are eating and using to do medicine. That's what Satan does. Just scare people over nothing. They will run away from their inheritance because Satan will just tell them one thing. Listen, people of God, Satan doesn't have the power that people think he has. He's a master of wrong perception. He's a master of wrong perception. He's a master of wrong perception. Can you imagine that you're in the garden a garden the Lord personally planted and you are not satisfied. Why? Because you can't eat one tree. That's what Satan does. He says, look at your life. Everybody eating anything they like. They now put boundary around this tree for you. And you don't want to eat it. They say, if you eat it, you will, die. you will not die. You will not die. You will not die now. What are you dying about? See, 
Go and check it. God specifically said to them, of all the trees in the garden, you can eat any one. But this one, you can't eat. Then Satan went there and said, don't you want to eat it? Oh my, so I read this somewhere long ago, not even a Christian magazine. Uh, one article. Forgot about couples. Say a man and his wife go to the market. They want to go and buy curtains. Blinds, like some people will call them. So you see them say, ah, the, the woman picks one. Say, whoa, this is beautiful. The man says, what? This is ugly. He said, no, this is nice. This is Venetian. Venetian. Ah. The man says, Venetian? Yeah. They are blind. That's why the blinds are named after them. Venetian blind. They don't see. <laughs> so the man said, describe. He said, next thing, you see a husband and wife sit down in one market that's full of, you know, scores and scores and scores of designs. And they are quarreling over one. He said, the man doesn't like it. The man, woman likes it. He said, drop it. Go to the next one. The man likes The woman doesn't like it. Drop it. Until you find one that both of you like. He was trying to teach about marriage. But let me not sit. But I just wanted to tell that story to, to help some people. So I hope that that has helped you today, right? Yeah. <laughs> the way you breathed like this, you breathed down. It has helped you also. No, that you're breathing down. <laughs> like, oh, finally I got a key. <laughs> Where I'm going is that that's what Satan does. He causes quarrel on one thing, one tree. If you have said that, I've not eaten it. Why? They say we will die. Well, you won't die. It doesn't matter. Whether I die or not, the other wants to eat. Why are we having an argument whether you will die or not die? Is that the only one that is there? I'm talking about satanic strategy. That's what he does. Trying his best to make you abandon what you are supposed to keep. He wants you to abandon what you are supposed to keep. He cannot force you out. He just has to give you what? Wrong perception. He has to twist it. The way we sit down sometimes. Let me talk about university education. I don't care to educate my children in this country. I said, mm, it doesn't concern me as your children, not mine. Hey, look at now. Uh, Nasu and Sanu, they are on strike. Uh-huh. So? You don't know when they will graduate? Do I know when the Lord will come back? Am I not waiting for him? What sort of this one say I tell him? Just at an aside, what annoys me, you know, I've been saying this in eh? If you want to do some things, have plenty of money. Stop giving yourself stress because your neighbor is doing it. Your neighbor says, you can't, you can't carry all the children, send them to expensive private schools. You want to do the same thing. Now you can't repair your car. They've told you now, come and change the engine. You're not angry with the mechanic. Now, what happened? You carry the children to the school, you can't pay. You, can't, you know you can't pay. Somebody said, the house is going on strike. you like, look, you have negotiated with the children. Say, you manage the strike, but I won't pay too much money. Then I'll give you extra this. I'll buy you a new laptop, change your phone to the best phone. What do you think? The chair will not. Mm-hmm. Be smart. I hope you get my point. That's an aside. Stop putting yourself under pressure. See, if you can't, you say, I will pray God will supply. Then pray for us. If that's how big your faith is, it's a small kick to help some people. They will be, they'll be describing for you. Look at the problem in your country. I said, listen. Like, you know, I quoted one man the other day for you. That he said, he said, if I talk to Nigerians, he's not in Nigeria. So when I talk to my friends who are Nigerians in Nigeria, he said 90% of the conversation, they are describing the problems of the country. 90%. Nigerians in Nigeria, talking to a foreigner, an African though. He said, most of the conversation, he said 90% is about the problems in the country. He said, but when I talk to my friends who are in Nigeria, but are not Nigerians, he said 90% of the conversation is on the opportunities in the country. Different perspectives. I'm talking about Satan, how he works. He doesn't have power. What he can do is to help you misinterpret Focus on the wrong thing. The only tree in the garden. Eh? Power is not constant. Hey. We send you to a place where power is constant, but if you miss paying your rent one week like this, they can eject you. Yeah. Look, I'm not, see, I'm not saying your power is constant. All right? But I'm saying that's not the only thing that's happening in that house. Your rent that you can afford is something. It's something. The fact that you are not under threat of ejection all of a sudden is something. 
that you actually have a landlord that if indeed you lost your job, he will understand and actually give you money to eat. That is better than having constant power. Trust me. Huh? Having friends who can check on you if you, are, if you are sick. And they actually bring food. In your church, everybody will even take turns. Who has given him food? That counts for something. Asu goes on strike. Nasu goes on strike. San goes on strike. Is bad. They are bad things. But during the strike, the children gather and they are singing songs and worshiping God. It counts for something. That on that same campus, they can brandish their faith confidently. And before the lecturer comes, they come to the front of the class and give a Bible lesson, even if nobody is listening. I had a class that I used to do when I was in university. He comes to class every day. Once he comes to a class, he will put the Bible there and start teaching the Bible, even though nobody is. He doesn't care. He will stand there until the teacher comes, the lecturer comes. He's going to teach the Bible. So the class is supposed to start by 8.30. He gets there by 8. He will stand in front and teach the scriptures for 30 minutes. If I, one day, I sat down listening to him. Not said any questions, I put up my hand. He said, what's the question? <laughs> we are friends here today, of course. He's a professor in one university nearby. <laughs> now, I said, are you aware I'm the only one listening to you? <laughs> he told me to get away. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> But that's good enough. Somebody is listening. This means something. I hope you're getting my point. Satan is a master of wrong perception. He gives a wrong perspective. You start inter- Why? Why does he do that? It's the only way to kick you out of the place of your appointment. It's the only place, way to keep you out of, kick you out of where God wants to meet you regularly. And in time, God says, this is your Jerusalem. He says to you also, guard it and what? Keep it. Guard it and what? Answer me now. Guard it and what? Keep it. No, it means to keep it. Don't let them snatch it away from you. Somebody wants to snatch it, you hold it tight. I won't let it go. Whether the problem is there, most certainly. I mean, promised land was whose idea? Moses' idea? Aaron's idea? The elders of Israel? Whose idea was it? Were the giants there? And for refusing to enter, for magnifying the giants, God killed everybody. You don't want God to kill you for nothing. So it's not good, he said, guard it and keep it. And what am I teaching today? And I began the last time. How do you do that? By making requests. By asking the Lord. You know, he said this also. That's why we're ready. Let's go back there now. Ezekiel chapter 36. He said, thus is the Lord God... This also I will let the house of Israel ask me to do for them. I will increase their men like a flock. Like a flock for sacrifices, I will increase their men. Like the flock at Jerusalem during her appointed feast, so will the waste cities be filled with flocks of men. Why will I do it? Because they will ask me. I said to us last time, I'm repeating it again. I remember I said something about government policies. IMF said they are good. This week, NLC said you are wicked people. <laughs> Did you? I don't know if you read the news. IMF said to, sorry, NLC, Nigerian Labour Congress, which really made of people who don't understand economics anyway. They just, it's true now. Am I lying? They don't care about economics. They just care about how they feel. We, the masses. They say, IMF, you are the reason why we lost our first subsidy. IMF said, no, it's not also. They are now fighting IMF, say, you are lying, it is you. IMF says, the policies are good. World Bank says, excellent. You read Financial Times, Washington Post, all the big foreign analysts, they say, good policy. You guys are now going to move forward. One Nigerian young man, very rich guy. One guy said, why won't you talk nonsense because you are rich? I said, my friend, incidentally, the same guy that used to preach I was telling you about was a busy guy. I said, my friend, go and ask him, how did he become rich? And I don't want to talk, tell his story now. Beautiful story, beautiful story. I heard that the guy was is even a son of a, of a pastor. Beautiful story. People saw what he was doing. People like Facebook, Google saw what he was doing and invested money in his business right in Nigeria. 
But let's not talk about that. He sat down and analyzed and said, this is Nigeria's moment. He said, it is now that you attract beautiful jo-. He was describing the... People say, ah, but people are going through pain. He said, it's only temporary. There's going to become better. And he, gave, he told a story about how America was at a particular point in time that he sees Nigeria at that same critical point now. Beautiful, honestly, very beautiful. There's only one thing. I didn't believe him. I don't think he's wrong. Though. No, I don't think he's wrong. I think he's very right. I just don't believe him. Why? Because what we need is this. I will also let the house of Israel ask me to do for them. What we do is the one we ask. Because by faith we understand that the words were framed by the word of God. What we will see is not a result of things that can, you can explain. See, I've understood this life enough. I haven't seen all these years. You see, you can only describe this thing looking backwards. You can do everything wrong according to IMF and, and World Bank. Then when the results show, my God, it'll be so beautiful. Then they will look closer and start writing economic laws and theories. Or you can do everything right. Before it bears fruit, the country has scattered. Do you understand? They say, where people can get so hungry, they spoil everything. You may say, it's, it, it go better. No, relax, relax. Oh, God, they but then they don't spoil everything. After all, I remember one of our brothers, who mentioned his name. He was showing the things that they did in Ukraine, and this happened, and this happened, until Vladimir put his head bombing them. Everything they did now is upside down. According to Mike Tyson, he has a very famous say. Mike Tyson says, everybody has a plan until he gets punched in the face. You go there, you don't plan. This one you do, you say, when they hit you one bad one, you will forget all your plans. That's why I don't believe him. Not because he's wrong. Actually, I understood everything he was saying when I was listening. Beautiful. Everything was saying beautiful. But I say to the people of God, except they make requests of the Lord, Nothing good will come out of it. This is a nation. Now, let me end with this. This is a nation in which the church is established. This is a nation in which God wants to manifest his glory. And he said, my glory, my glory, I will share with nobody. You know how God will not share his glory with anybody? I'll tell you. It's very simple. At least in the life of Christians. Did you see here? He said, I will let them ask me to do this for them then they will know I am the Lord. Did you catch it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How would they know I'm the Lord when I answer their prayers? Not when their own plans come to pass. Do you get my point? Yes, sir. Let us assume. Now, I'm not saying we should do this. I just have an illustration. How much is for today? 1, 2, 50. 1, 3. 1, 2, 20. Anyway. anyway. Okay. Let us assume it's 1, 2. Let us assume for one reason or the other. We all gather and say, Lord, this is pretty expensive. And somebody just raised his voice in church and said, Lord, we ask you to drop it to 700 naira over the next one month. Faith is better than our hearts. And we say, Amen. We said it in church. We didn't say it on the news. We didn't say it on the radio broadcast. We just said it in church. Maybe we aired it and a number of Christians picked from here and there and they all said Amen by faith. And God shut the mouths of those who are like, uh, even if God were to make the windows in in oil well, can these things be? You know that kind of thing. God shut their mouth. And then, just it, that is, he said end of the month, right? 28 days afterwards, you drive to the first filling station. Well, say, so, ah, you want to fill your tank? I say, ah, can I fill my tank? He said, ah, it's 700 where I said, ah, you buy 700. The other guy comes to church and says, I bought somewhere down my street, so 680. What would everybody say? Let's be honest. What will everybody say? No, no, just answer me. God has answered our prayers. Nobody will say, wow, Ashivaju is walking. They will not say anything like that. They won't say, ah, thank God for that. They won't say it. They will know I am the Lord. Let me tell you a sign of faith that you really believe in God. That you pray. Did you hear what I said? It's a sign of faith. The sign of faith that you really believe in God is that you pray. Yes, I got shocked by a small kind of discovery I made. Something, you know, something in the university. But you know what calmed my heart down? 
Before I made the discovery, I had prayed. Say, Lord, I want to do this. So, please help me with this, this, and that. And then when I made the discovery, you know, ha, it would have knocked me off my feet, except that it was God I made a request of. I just said, mm, it doesn't matter. If you got on your knees and said, Lord, I need a new car as an example, and you pray, and you get up, maybe your mind, the thing at 3.5 million. You now ask somebody, say, how much they say this brand of car? And I say, ah, 8 million there. You know? <laughs> if you had money, maybe you had 3.5. No, what happen? Immediately you'll be what? Discouraged. But if you had nothing, it's just news now. I don't know what I get my point. It doesn't bother you because when it was 3.5, what did you get? Nothing. Now that's 8 million. What do you get? Nothing. So you, were not, you are not farther away than you were at the beginning. And you are not closer. Your, your closeness is determined by your faith in God. Do you get my point? And that's what God wants to do for the people of God. Every progress we make in life, let me tell you, will be a sign of what? It will be a re- reaction to what? Prayer. That you actually prayed. Please, let me beg you. Hmm? Because many of us you want to buy land, you want to build a house, you want to buy a car, you want to pay teachers, you want to do You have plans. Today you are going to drop the plans. Though. Because God has plans. I hope you get my point. And except your plans align with one he wants to use, they are, they are pointless. They are pointless. Whatever you want to do, how do you handle it? You pray. Let me go by it again. Four things Christians are supposed to do. That's how you live your life and you will succeed. Number one, you learn. Number two, you obey whatever precepts God has taught you through the learning process. Number three, crucial, ask. The key to your progress in life is asking. I don't want to talk about receiving now. That would be a totally different story. There's a principle behind it, but I don't want to teach in the school of prayer now. But you get to that point, it is asking. Anything you're, you're concerned about, you know, sometimes government is planning for us, our future. Saving a retirement plan. Uh, what do you call that now? Uh, yeah, participatory pension scheme. I hope you know those things can collapse. Yeah, they are tied to the performance of the economy. They can fail. You can save for 30 years. The day you're supposed to start earning, the thing is worth nothing. I still remember very well. My father, this, my father did this one. I found out later. You know, my father didn't used to talk. So one day my mother just told me about it. But I remember when he collected the money. You know this insurance thing that they do? I can't even tell you the, the exact amount because some of you can't live with that kind of money these days. So let me use modern money for it. Okay, no, I know how to explain it for you. When he entered that scheme, it was supposed to be 20 years, you know, this uh, life assurance stuff. This was 20 years. When he entered, the money that was assured could buy, if I remember well, could buy at least a brand new vehicle or two. And he paid, I think, either annually or monthly for 20 years. When it matured, the money could only buy four tires. Okay, maybe eight tires, but not more than that. I was there. I have, the, I have the amount in my head. The car he bought before that cost him more than three times that money. This money could have bought three cars. So at least small ones when he, when, he, when he started the scheme. Inflation turned it to nothing. When I, of course, he didn't use to talk. I just knew that there was some money he was supposed to collect, and he collected the money, and then we all gazoled it. You know, you get my point. It was when my mother passed a comment about it. There's a particular comment she passed. I was young. I didn't understand. It was years later when I grew up and I could understand life. And I looked back. I said, no, he did nothing wrong. It was like, so you can imagine when I now became a, a worker, started doing my residency in Lagos, one guy now came to me and now offered me the same deal to mature in 15 years. He didn't know what I had experienced in my life. He said, I should give me 500 naira a month, which was a little under 10% of my income. I was earning about 6,000 a month. I was only giving 500 naira every month. And that in 15 years, I think I was going to get like 150,000 or 100,000 or 200,000, something like that. 
Yeah, it looked big if you're thinking of 500 naira every month. They'll compound it, they'll do that and all of that. He didn't know I had my father's experience in my mind. And I had faith in the word of God also, keeping my heart strong. I looked at the guy. I said, the money you are talking about, at that time, it would be nothing to me. You want to know the truth? At that time, it was nothing. Not just because I became richer, of course, I was making progress in life. But again, you know the way inflation works. I think it was supposed to, this discussion was had around 1995. Okay? Yeah, 95. Yeah, 95. 95 plus um, 15 is what? 2010 now. Yes, 2010. I got married in 2000, five years after this discussion. Ten years later, I was living in Enugu. At that time, where I was living then, my house rent was already... Something like 400,000 a year, if I'm correct. When we were living at Umoji. Yes. House rent. I was only paying like 400K. Yeah, I was only paying like 400K. So, if I had given give him a tight <laughs> monthly. Do you get my point? And then I'm matured at that time. I would have just used to take my wife. What are you even talking about? I still remember. I'm not kidding was my wife's birthday. I paid 50000 for two gold rings for her. Before that time. I just said, ah, okay. Come, let me, it was just her birthday. What do I give this girl? I just went, that's money that was I showed. That is <laughs> I told the guy there, I said, look, you don't get it. I said, this money you are telling me that you give me in 15 years, at that time, it would be worth nothing to me. By that time, I was paying more than double as annual rent where I was living. And I've been tightened to you for how long? It would have been better. You gave me the 200K that time. May I chop I go on to repay you for 20 years. Is that? <laughs> <laughs> now, you know I'm talking about all of this. So, I like, put in the stock market. You've, you've been to the stock market before. And you have seen your money disappear. When Charles Ludo, we should consolidate bank those days. I joined them to help. Cons- no, I wasn't looking for anything really. I just joined them to. I preached about it. That restore our captivity, O oh Lord. Most of those banks that they say buy shares, ask my wife to, one of them even sends dividends. We li- literally always threw away their check. Basically, all the money we gave to them came to nothing. I didn't even lose sweat over it. That's life for you. Yes. That's life. It's not a, so someone said, hey, you build a stock portfolio, diversify. Go and diversify in Ukraine. See, if you are worried about your destiny, in quote, your future, what do you do? No, pray. And I'm not joking. Pray. pray. God will bless you so much, you will look back and be laughing. When I say possess your land, I'm ending the message today, the series today. That's how you do it. But God demands that you take whatever he has given you to keep seriously. It's not just land. We've been talking about land. But remember, it has to do with your family. Even say, say, by faith, do what? Possess even your soul. With patience, possess your soul. You are supposed to possess your soul too. Anything that God puts in your hand, guard it and do what? Keep it. Your children, they are yours to guard and do what? And keep. Hey, you have to learn to pray for those people. Though. When I last your daddy, what are you supposed to do to, to, to secure them a brilliant destiny? Let's go by it again. One? One? Oh, this, I will set test now. One, you pray for them. You pray. You make tangible, specific requests. You will say to the Lord, none of my children will be a son or daughter of Belial. Say, the son of the devil, I didn't give birth to that one. No, not at all. And for those of you who don't, if you, I mean, you're believing God to get my, bring God to have children, ask him now. Say, God, you need to send Judas into this, house, this world, Abby, but not this house. Say, so get some mamu, go down the street, use their house for Judah's entry. There are some people who have denied the Lord, use them. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So that when they are apportioning children in heaven, they already know which direction I'm go- they are going. Say, so this one go keep us. Say, go, go, go and meet Agbaku. Agbaku is living on the street. Say, <laughs> so, no, don't come near here. He said, Judas, Judas, who will tell her? He said, that one. Eh? See, 
There's one man who has been denying God. He said, there is no God. Send him to his house. Say, for Banky's house, send men of God. Send women of God. Those that see visions of heaven. Samuel, let them go there. Daniel, let them go there. Deborah, let them go there. Do you get my point? Yeah, let them go to Banky's house. Say, what? That's what he asked for. What's the meaning of Samuel? I asked for the him from the Lord. You think it's possible for Hophni and Phineas to have been children of Hannah? Now, in life, he bond those kind of things. <laughs> Hannah said, whatever child you give me, let me put in my own words, we serve you. Whatever child you send to my house will be dedicated to your purpose on this earth. Please, oh, I don't want Jaguda. I don't want Agbako. I don't want Tiger. No, 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 I don't want you know, all those terrible <laughs> people. No, but the Kuyo, all those guys, I don't want them in my house. And you know what? God will grant what you asked. Do you get my point? And after they arrive, <laughs> you will pray for them and you will teach them righteousness and justice. See, there is no, look, I was reading the story of somebody today. I didn't read it, so I just saw the headline on BBC News. How this guy, one of the richest men in Europe, he, he was born in poverty. I once saw the story of John D. Rockefeller. One guy analyzed all of them. His father moved from there to play because the place where they were had failed so terribly. Poverty was an issue. Then it became, was it him or the other guy? No, the other man that became at the point in time the richest man in the world. When they paid him for U.S., uh, what do they call it? Carnegie Steel. No, is it Carnegie? It wasn't Andrew Carnegie, the steel, the steel magnet. Yes. When J.P. Morgan paid him almost $500 million of those days, 400 and something million dollars, cash, when he transferred the money to him, to him, congratulations, you are now the richest man in the world. He grew up in total poverty. Total. Ben Cass's mother looked at him and said, we can ask God for, he said, you can become anything. All we need to do is what? Ask God. He said, you can be anything you want. All we need to do is what? Ask God for it. That's how you possess. That's how you get that which is yours. Your ministry, the same thing. You have a business, you are doing this thing. You have gone, you know, people have gone, spent money, business seminar. They've never taken a day with a piece of paper. And ask the Lord, what do I do? And start invoking the name of the Lord on the business they started. Haba, how do you intend to possess it like that? How do you intend to guard it? You know, angels guard businesses, you don't know that. This also, I will let the children of God ask me to do for them. I will guard their businesses, they will have no loss. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. That's how we overcome. Let's bow down. It's time to pray. Spoken enough for today. We began to pray last time. Let's finish the prayer today. First, I'll give you a minute. Thanksgiving. Say, Lord, thank you. Because I'm not without help. Give the Lord thanks because you have help. I wanted to give thanks. Say, Lord, I want to say thank you. Because I'm not helpless. Now, you need to say this to him. You can take your Bible out and read this or repeat what I'm saying. Use your own words. You know it very well. My help comes from the Lord. You need to say to him. Say, Lord, my help comes from you. Declare it loud, my help comes from the Lord. Make her of heaven and earth. You need to say that. My help comes from the Lord. My help does not come from human, you know, help. Say, not by power, not by might, not human power, not human determination. Not in human energy, but by my spirit, says the Lord. You need to lay claim on that. Say, what I will get in life, it will be by the spirit of God. Say, this nation, I declare in the name of Jesus as a salt of the earth that it will be well with you. Not by power, not by might, but by the spirit. Give the Lord and say, Lord, my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. You need to confess that again and again. Many people have been you know, focused on their own lack of 
ability, their own lack of, you know, connection, money. God says, no. How will you know I am God? You will pray and I will answer. This also, I will let the house of Israel ask me to do for them. He said, then they will know that I am the Lord. That's what we are talking about this evening. This evening, that we will know that he is the Lord. That we will know that he is the Lord. Say, Lord, that I might know that you are the Lord. I'm coming to you in prayer. When God gives, allows challenges in our lives, it is so that we will know that he is the Lord. It is so that we will know he is the Lord. See, I want you to just forget. When I say forget now, okay, don't forget, but okay. Recall to mind your disadvantages, your inabilities, because we want to wipe them away now. These are the things they said I can't do. Say, my God, by you I can run through a troop. I can leap over a wall. Lord, after today, I am no longer a subject of these disadvantages. I wipe them out today with this scripture. By my God, I can run through a troop. You need to say that loud. By my God, I can run through a troop. I can leap over a wall. Not by myself, not by my strength. By my God. You need to say that loud. <laughs> say it so that God will hear you. So that you will hear yourself. Like I said, yes, you recall we brought up to mind. Your, just think about it. These are the things I can't do. I don't speak well. I don't remember where I'm not very good with math. I'm not good with this one. That's what they have told me. That's what the experience has said. But now going forward, what am I saying? By my God, I can run through a troop. By my God, I can leap over a wall. You need to say that. By my God, I can run through a troop. By my God, I can leap over a wall. Not by my energy. <laughs> not by my energy. Not by my Strength, but by my God. I can scale over the wall by my God. You need to say it. By my God, I can run through a troop. I can leap over a wall. That's what David said. He said, for by you I can run upon a troop. And by my God, I can leap over a wall. <laughs> I love that scripture. It's so alive to me this evening. It's so alive to me this evening. It's so alive to me this evening. He said, for you save and afflicted people, but haughty eyes you are based. Those who think they can do it, they are the ones you will bring down. He said, for you light my lamp. That's what he's doing with his word. The Lord my God illumines my darkness. For by you, I can run th- upon the truth. And by my God, I can leap over a wall. I'm reading from Psalm 18. Verse 29 is the one I've been quoting. For by you, I can... No, you need to say that. I can overcome challenges. By my God, New Living Translation says, In your strength, I can crush an army. With my God, I can scale any wall, any obstruction, any challenge, any trouble... (laughs) <laughs> when they say there are giants there, I can run through them. That same spirit that God used to send into Samson is with me. It's the angel of God. The, the strength was not inside Samson. It was God that was with him. When he said that the Lord departed from him, it was God that, the, the, God, the angel of God that left him. That angel is with you again today. You need to say it by my God. I can leap over every obstacle. By my God, I can leap over every obstacle. I want somebody to get rid of his or her disadvantages this evening. Stop defining yourself by your inherent ability. By my God, I can leap over a wall. Hear the word of the Lord. You must stop defining yourself by your inherent inabilities. 
you need to say it loud. By my God, I can leap over a wall. I say it again. Ben Cassie's mother said to him, you can be anything you want. All we need to do is ask God for it. Let me give you one minute. Ask God for something. Something you truly need. In righteousness you desire. But it looks like you can't do it by yourself. Maybe even the medical report that says it cannot be done. Today, we are not going by what they say. We are not, saying, we are not going by the money that they said we have or don't have. We are saying, by my God, I can overcome this. So pray. Say this also. I will let the children of Israel, I will let the sons of God, I will let my Christians, the believers in Christ Jesus, ask me to do for him. Ask me to do for her. I will increase them like a flock. I will increase their business. I will increase their family. I will strengthen their finances. I will put protection in their neighborhood. Somebody, maybe you are listening to this. They say, ah, thieves are plenty here. Robbers come here. People raid in this area. Time to park. I say, no, no, wait, wait. Let them park. Me, I'm not parking. By my God, they will be destroyed. I will survive here. I will thrive here. I will be blessed. You need to say that. Don't you, look, God wants to flex his muscle on somebody's behalf. Say, the eye of the Lord runs to and fro throughout the whole earth. Looking for the opportunity to show himself strong on behalf of that person whose heart is completely his. One who focuses on him and says, the Lord is my helper. The Lord is a shade at my right hand. You need to recite that scripture. At this point, I want you to recite that scripture. Open your Bible and use it to meditate. You know, we're talking about meditating. Psalm 121. You need to recite it. The Lord is my helper. The Lord is a shade at my right hand. The sun will not smite me by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep me from all, all, all harm. He will watch over my soul. The Lord will keep my going out and my coming in from this time forth and forever. The emphasis is on the Lord is my keeper. The Lord is my helper. The Lord is a shade at my right hand. The Lord is my provider. I was reading the Bible this morning in my house. I will go to that Genesis chapter, was it 17? We read that. God came to Abraham. He said, I am your shield. Genesis 17. I am God Almighty. Now God Almighty, read the New Living Translation. I like the way he says it. He said, I am El Shaddai, God Almighty. That's New Living Translation, verse 1. The Lord appeared to him and said, I am El Shaddai. God Almighty. <laughs> Somewhere else he said, I'm your shield and your exceedingly great reward. This was one we read this morning. He said, I'm God Almighty, El Shaddai. What is El Shaddai? Almighty breasted one. Like the way Pastor Faith said it in the, in the All Believers Prayer Convention of TCC. He said, if, if a woman has twins, she can manage to breastfeed them. What if she can't get tri- triplets? How will she breastfeed triplets? What if she now has four? He said, but what is God? He can have a billion. And he can feed all of them side by side. That's the meaning of El Shaddai, actually. That's actually the meaning of El Shaddai. That's the meaning of El Shaddai. Declare, say, he is my El Shaddai. You have to personalize who God is. My God. When Paul wanted to bless the church in Philippi, he said, my God shall supply. I wonder I read that. The thing, I said, wait, wait, wait. What did Paul say? He, said, he called him. He was very personal about it. He said, my God shall supply all your needs. <laughs> he said to Abraham, I am your exceedingly great reward. Say this evening. Say, he is my El Shaddai. He is my father. He is my helper. He is my provider. I lay claim to everything he has promised me, including physical geography. Nobody's driving me up and down. I claim this land. Whatever sphere you are in, claim it also. 
Whatever, whatever God has placed you, claim, you no, know, claim it. Ah, people just be rejecting God, what God has given them because they are giants. Drive out the giants and build in that land. <laughs> Establish yourself in that field. How? With prayer. You see, what God is saying is, ask me to do. Ask me to do. Ask me to do. Ask me to do. Sometimes I, see, I hear some government policies. I just say, the Lord, this is not right. Because we are streaming. I don't want to say some things. One of the ministers dropped you that day. I was just angry with him. I said, well, this is my, so you don't have any other problem. And I use it to preach here. I said, this is my, somebody should go and tell this minister that this thing he's doing is not the problem we have in education. And I told who it is. No. <laughs> Three weeks later, I heard it's been dropped. I said, huh? But we told you now, you are focusing on what is not our problem. He said this also. I will let the sons of Israel ask me to do for them. Somebody today, ask the Lord to do something for you. Somebody listening to me, you need to pray for your children. You have to repent. You've shouted all your life, you have not prayed. And you are watching them, you are losing them one after the other. The first one is now 15, you don't understand him anymore. And you are afraid. And listen, you should be. You should be. If you have not been praying, you should be afraid. But there's no need to fear for long. Let that fear bring you to repentance and say, Lord, I am sorry. I've neglected my duty. All I've done is shout. All I've done is plan, pray, you know, wish. That's the word. Wish that they will become successful in life. I've not prayed for them. I've not taught them righteousness and justice. In fact, I've taught them injustice. I've taught them to cheat. I've, rebuked, I've refused to rebuke them when they had conflicts with their friends, thinking that they needed to stand behind my own. So this is the reward that I've been getting for that. Lord, I repent. Now give those children to the Lord. They need to be circumcised. I don't mean physical circumcision, please. Don't get me wrong. Circumcision means to say, Lord, this is not mine. This is now yours. This is Samuel. I drop him, Lord, at your altar. We don't have a physical tabernacle to go and put Samuel these days. Samuel will still live in our homes. But now he's given to the Lord. I received him from the Lord. He is giving to the Lord. It's very interesting. I received him from the Lord. I asked for him from the Lord. Now I give him to the Lord. You need to do that with every... Mention your children one by one. Mention them by name. And say, see, Judas, you did not come to this house. Samuel, you came to this house. Moses, you came to this house. <laughs> Daniel, you came to this house. Deborah, you came to this house. <laughs> Lois, you came to this house. That's the mother and grandmother and Eunice of Timothy. You came to this house. Now, when I'm mentioning this, these are examples of people of faith who served the Lord, who bore the testimony of heaven, who served the Lord. Call your children by those names. I don't mean like change their names, but you are saying that's what they are. As Joseph served the Lord, so you will serve God. You will serve the purpose of God in your generation. As Joseph served the Lord, so you will serve the purpose of God. As Moses served the purpose of God, as Paul, the apostle, served the purpose of God, as John, the beloved, kept faith to the very end, so will you keep faith. Say, Lord, this is what I'm asking you to do for my children. Keep them from evil. When Jesus said, pray like this, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. What was he saying? Let's not do evil. He wasn't saying from being victims of evil, no. Let us not fall into the temptation to do evil. Lord, none of my children, ask him, will smoke drugs. None of them will be addicted. None of them will become a loose man or a loose woman on the streets. No, in the name of Jesus. But they will carry the testimony of God everywhere. This, he wants you to ask him to do. What is the promise? He said, my children will be taught of the Lord and great will be their peace. That's what he said. Though. He said, your children will be taught of the Lord. I need to use that promise to pray. He said, my children will be taught of the Lord. Great will be their peace. Yeah. 
He said, my children will be taught of the Lord. And great will be their peace. That's what Isaiah prophesied. All your sons will be taught of the Lord. And the well-being of your sons will be great. In righteousness you will be established. You will be far from oppression. For you will not fear. And from terror, for it will not come near you. You need to use that to pray for your children. He said, if anyone fiercely assails you, it will not be from me. Whoever assails you will fall because of you. That's what the Lord is saying. He said, Lord, this I want to do for my household. He said, God said, I want you to ask me to do it. I want you to ask me to do it. All your children will be taught of the Lord. And they will enjoy great peace. He said, you will be secure under a government that is just and fair. I like that. That's New Living Translation. I'm reading from Isaiah chapter 54. That's verse 14. Let's just the opportunity to now pray for our government, therefore. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, let this government be just and fair. Let them have wisdom. Why? This I will let the sons of Israel ask me to do for them. Lord, do this for us. We ask of you in the name of Jesus. Now, I want us to pray one prayer for the church of God. Remember, it's for the sake of Jerusalem. Remember that? Now, the most important thing Jerusalem needs now is the knowledge of truth. So, pray this prayer as we close. Say, Lord, let there be a revival of truth in your church. Let it be a revival. Now, I don't want to say the other former days were better than now, but at least I can give some references. When I was growing up as a believer in the University of Benin those days, one thing we saw around a lot when we went to places was to go and hear the word of God. Now, people go and look for excitement. I don't understand. Then we went to go and hear the word of God. Say, Lord, let there be a revival of the hunger for truth amongst your people. So that they will not be tossed to and fro by having the doc- the doctrine. Like an apostle or prophet will come. They will not get carried away. So, Lord, that spirit of discernment, that spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you, we are asking you, pour upon the church in this Jerusalem. Remember this, our Jerusalem. Remember this, our Jerusalem. But that's the important thing. This Jerusalem, you have to start in Jerusalem, and then Judea, then, then Samaria. And then you go beyond that. So let's start with our Jerusalem, which is the church of God exactly. So for the sake of my brothers and my friends, I will say, peace be upon you. So let's pray for this church, the church of God in this nation. Say, Lord, we ask that truth will prevail. We ask that you uproot every Jezebel. Now, Jezebel, you need to listen. It doesn't have to be a woman. Is there any false prophet that's leading the people of God astray? He said, I will cast you on the bed of affliction. That's what God said. So be, be warned, be warned. Repent now. But Father God, we ask of you, uproot every Jezebel. You need to pray that prayer. Uproot them. Uproot them. Those that preach lies and prophesy falsehood for their own personal gain, let them not thrive in this church, the church in this nation. But we're asking that the knowledge of the glory of the Lord will fill this church first, and then it will fill this land. Say, Lord, let revival break through. Let revival, the revival break forth. Let revival break forth. Lord, let revival break forth. Lord, let revival break forth. Lord, take the eyes of your people away from the things of this world but from, for, but, and put the eyes on the things of eternity. I was in Medjugorje with Pastor Courage a few weeks ago. Just about two weeks now, I came back. And we're talking about living with eternity in view. That was a prophetic word. Say, Lord, teach us to live with eternity in view. Recognizing that there's a job to do. There are souls to be won. There are destinies to fulfill. Then pray for the church in this land. Say, Lord, bless this land for our sake. That we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness, in all godliness, in all godliness, so we can, you know, perform the assignment of evangelism, the apostolic spirit that you have poured upon us. Give the Lord thanks. Say, Father, we thank you. Say, Lord, we thank you. Let's rise to our feet.
Psalm 121. Let's just read it together from verse 2. One, two, let's go. My help comes from the Lord, made heaven and earth. He will not allow my fo- Sorry, let me, sorry, 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 sorry. Can I just beg? Let's personalize it throughout. Is that okay? You see David saying something and then prophesying. But let's personalize it throughout. Let's start again. One, two, let's go. My help comes from the Lord. No, I don't think you are sure. One, two, let's go. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow my foot to sleep. He who keeps me will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is my keeper. The Lord is my shade at my right hand. The sun will not smite me by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will protect me from all evil. He will keep my soul. The Lord will guard my going out and my coming in from this time forth and forever. Amen. Now that is your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me say it one more time. That exactly is your portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord will keep you from all evil. Amen. He will establish you in the place where he has kept you. Amen. And there you will prosper. Amen. He said, behold, I will cause prosperity to flow towards you like a river. And the wealth of the nations like an overflowing stream. Amen. And that's an activated word for somebody. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Right, let's share the grace in fellowship. Because of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Surely we have passed out of death. And we have passed into life. We have passed out of darkness into the light of Christ. We have passed out from under the curse into the blessing. All things have passed away in our lives. We are now filled with the spirit of Christ. We live above sin and walk above the devil because we are seated high above with Christ. This is our season of the demonstration of the Spirit and of the power of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Bless one person beside you. Say, this is your season. Now, one for yourself. This is my season. And of the power of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. All right, cherub brethren. God bless you.